So it has been requested I talk more about the Gen 4 versus the Gen 5 and what are the differences. So we're going to talk to Kalen here. He, uh, he's pretty much in charge of doing the wiring installs on our builds. What do we have here? So this is a L99 with a 6L80. This build was done about two years ago. Still running strong. This is our new battery tray? That's the new battery tray. And how does that clean things up? Uh, it opens up this whole side right here, so we have more room for the heater hoses. As most of you know, the LS3s have a big issue with the dipstick being too close. This lets you check your oil better. More room for the intake. Now, I will say that this is an L99, which is essentially the same as an LS3. It just had an automatic, so it came with a VVT and AFM. You'll notice that you can see the heater hoses on the firewall. You can see the air conditioning lines coming off the firewall. You really can't see that so much with a Hemi or with the LS truck motors. And this is a CAN system. This isn't single module or MoTeC. It's a full uh, CAN system, six-speed transmission. What do we got over here? This right here is an LT1 with a 10L80. Uh, this also has our battery tray. Um, same thing, it opens it up. He's got a lot more cables going on. Uh, the intake is a little close on the LT1s just because they're a little bigger. Um, this is also a single module. So it, this area is cleaned up a lot too. So Yeah, let me mention something about the single module. Um, we're not running a Jeep computer in this vehicle, only the Jeep ECM. This ECM you see here is an E92 engine controller, GM. There is no Chrysler engine control module. So you've driven both of these, this LT10 speed and this LS6 speed. What is your impressions? Um, they're both awesome. This one, I mean, the bottom end torque is unmatchable. It's the direct injection that helps big time. The, the thing about the LS though, I mean, it's just simple. Anybody can work on it. Anybody can check their oil. They're not intimidated. The 10 speed on this one too, I mean, it's always in its power band. This motor, this motor and transmission is perfect for this Jeep. It's got 40s. And honestly, you can't even tell with this Jeep. This one's got 35s and this LS3 holds it just fine. All right, so what Kalen has said in layman's terms, I'm gonna to try to put into technical terms. This LS is a great motor. It's less costly. It's obviously simpler. It has, this particular engine does have variable valve timing, but it doesn't have continuous variable valve timing that the LT has. Now, on this conversion, we're running the stock AC hoses. You'll see that um, there's a little riser down there for the low side line. Well, actually, I don't think you can see it. But we're running the stock AC lines, stock accessory drive. So the alternator, power steering, pump, and air compressor are all factory uh, Chrysler. And we're using our MoTeC billet brackets. We're running a 4-inch to 3.5-inch bending reducer silicone into a three and a half inch aluminum tube with a cane and air filter and a sock. Again, we're running our battery tray that cleans things up. He's running an AC Delco battery and they work fine. If we step over here, we're really stepping up in technology. This engine has got variable valve timing, but it's continuous. What that means is the cam is constantly phasing. So instead of the transmission downshifting, that cam can phase and give you a burst of power without changing gears. The transmission itself is a 10 speed, so we have a wider gear diversity than we do on the six speed. Now, don't get me wrong, a six speed is still very viable. You've got a four to one low and a 0.67 overdrive. You compare that to the early Chrysler transmissions like the 42 RFE or RLE, and uh, there is no comparison. They're talking like 2.8 low and 0.8 on the top-ish. So we have a much better gear spread. We have much more torque. In fact, this 10L80 is about a 4.6 low and a 0.6 on the top. And there's 10 forward gears. And you combine that with an engine that has as much torque at 2000 RPM that most of the other engines have at 4000 RPM. And it's going to move a Jeep like this, even with one tons and 40s and double throwdown like a go-kart. One of the biggest advantages of the LT is the direct injection and we're running multiple fuel pumps. We're running the, essentially the stock Jeep fuel pump in the back, which puts out about 60, 61 PSI. That pumps it up to the rail, and then an internal mechanical pump steps that up to thousands of PSI. 
so that we can inject the fuel directly into the combustion chamber. With this vehicle, we're running sequential injection. It's, it's a version of port fuel injection, uh, but in 1996 when OBD2 came out, they required manufacturers to be able to shut off individual cylinders. So again, we're pumping that 60, 61 PSI right up to the rail and we're feeding the injectors direct, which shoots the fuel right behind the intake valve. And that's how we've been doing it for a long, long time since the inception of uh, fuel injection. We need that extra pressure for direct injection and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of technology that goes along with direct injection that these Gen 4 engines don't have. But sequential fuel injection is a huge leap ahead of carburetors and throttle body injection, the old throttle bodies that look like carburetors, and even port fuel injection. So there's, this is still no slouch. As far as fuel injection goes, it's a good setup and it's being used by a lot of manufacturers. So the LT has one step up on the fuel injection. It has one step up on the variable valve timing. Instead of VVT, it's CVVT. And as far as the accessory drive goes, you know we're running all the Jeep accessories on that vehicle over there. Well, on this vehicle, we're running the GM accessories. That is the alternator and the air compressor in the stock locations. We are running a PSC hydraulic power steering pump, which you really can't see because it's buried down in there. But I will say, this vehicle over here is a L87, and uh, we're going to be doing some unique things with this. We've got our uh, power steering pump on. This is a Type 2 GM pump, so it could run Hydro Boost if you wanted to. But we're also going to be running a, uh, a brake vacuum pump to create vacuum for the brake reservoir. Uh, the L87 went not only without a power steering pump, but without a, a vacuum port for brakes. Now, I've seen some guys try to pull vacuum off the intake, and I guess you could do that. But really, the whole world's going electronic right now. So we're kind of going along with it. And we're going to be doing some uh, electronic power steering builds like the JLs in the uh, future. But again, we have our stock GM alternator, stock GM air compressor, and this, this is an ICT billet uh, type 2 mount. There's others out there, including our own. But this is an L87, guys. So this has dynamic fuel management, which means... This can be a two cylinder all the way up to eight. Uh, it's got more configurations than active fuel management had. And guys, I hope you like these in-shop videos because there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes when you see me driving around in the desert. And every vehicle is different. If you look down this aisle here and you look outside, uh, we got Jeeps like this that are relatively stock. And then we got, I got a uh, orange Jeep out there that probably has every accessory that Quadratech has ever sold and everything in between so this vehicle here has a lot of electronic stuff going on it has PSC um, hydraulic steering it's got an air compressor over there we got air lockers in it uh, it's just got a lot of stuff going on this Jeep on the other hand is pretty simple as you can see by the battery terminals that's the first thing I look at um, we might have some stereos and things but overall it's pretty clean and it's pretty simple and this is what we have to deal with on these conversions is not only doing the conversion but making sure that everything is right and just so many things are not right on these bills a lot of times when we get them in we end up spending in some cases more time on on cleaning things up the aftermarket accessories than we do on the actual build itself this Jeep's getting ready to be tore down and by the way guys I apologize right outside of Nellis and I think the Thunderbirds are out doing some practicing. So I think we can all agree that this 3.8 engine was kind of a lemon in the JK, even in a stock one. And you look at all the stuff that's going on. Um, let me get my wand out. Uh, this is exhaust gas for circulation or EGR. It's back there. It's a pain. It's older technology that really should have went away a while ago. Most of the Gen 4 and 5 engines don't have EGR valves. They can use the cam phasing to uh, essentially replace it. Uh, if you just look at the clutter in here, um, the way that this is their purge valve, and they ran a really primitive EVAP system in these early JKs. They didn't have a fuel tank pressure sensor. They didn't have a uh, as sophisticated of monitoring as the uh, as the GM systems have. So. No matter what you do to these 3.8s, you can put on your air intakes and your turbos and superchargers. They're just not a V8. And when you look at the Penstar, it's definitely a step above. But with 
with the five-speed transmission, you just can't compare it. Let's take a walk over here and look at this. this is a new, and this is the first time I'm looking at it with the body down. This is an LT1. Uh, you can see it's got our battery tray, coolant bottle, powder-coated uh, intake. Um, they're still getting all this stuff mounted and sorted. This is an OE GM harness, OE power distribution sensor, uh, power distribution center connector. Um, we are going to run basically the stock lines up to here, and then they're, we make these lines uh, going down the bottom. We use our a stock GM alternator and air compressor again. This vehicle does not have PSC, so we got our stock Jeep reservoir, and we're using the stock Jeep pump. We'll see if we can take a look at it. Yeah, not really, but that's it down there if you guys can see it. Let's wander on down the shop a little bit. Here's a Jeep I was telling you about that's got every accessory pretty much known to the off-road world. Uh, let's see what Eugene's doing here. How you doing, Eugene? That's about as much as he talks for the whole day. Okay, so this is an L96 Gen 4 engine. And it's going to be getting a 6L80, obviously, because that's the only transmission we could run on it. This is our hot rod build. You guys probably saw that video a couple of days ago. It's been torn down. Now this is using, this, this Jeep was built maybe uh, seven years ago. It's using the full-size GM hydraulic motor mounts. And these are our old weld-in mounts that are very strong. And as you can see, even with a 525 horse engine, these mounts are still in good shape. And we're gonna reuse them. There's no reason not to. The easy mounts are just easy. So something interesting about uh, this build is the cross member was modified for the big MVG 4500. The uh, MVG 4500 has a sump that sits pretty low. A lot going on at Nellis today. The MVG 4500 has a sump that sits pretty low. So uh, whoever built this had sectioned it and did a pretty good job at it. Uh, one of the things about a two-door we talk about Look here, see how it says SWB? That's short wheelbase. Four door will say long wheelbase. And you'll notice this. The, and you'll notice that this tank is right up to the cross member. That's why we can't run the exhaust through here. With a four door, this tank's way back here, and we can run the exhaust through. Every LT is not a 6.2. This happens to be a L83 5.3 with a, I believe it's a 10 speed, I could be wrong, I don't see a dipstick tube. Uh, could be an eight speed, but I think it is a 10 speed. And by the way, Motec is uh, one of the first, if not the first, to do the 5.3 10 speeds, and they run awesome, guys. I'll tell you what, if I had to do build today for myself, or even my wife, I'd go with a 5.3 LT with a 10 speed. Um, value for dollar and performance and fuel economy, they're hard to beat. So here's a better look at our battery tray. Um, mounts to tip them up against the side here. Pretty simple mount. Um, the way Chris designed it, uh, you can run different size batteries. So group 34, group 78, whatever. Uh, again, we got a PSC here. This is our new dual header radiator. So we got four headers, there's two headers in here. We went back to a single pass, took all the straps off so this thing can flex. This is our AC condenser, and this is our Penstar transmission cooler. And this does a really good job for most vehicles. There's really no, uh, no reason not to run this setup. I know that there are other coolers out there, but we've had really good luck with these. This is Dan working on my Jeep. You guys probably recognize this. This is the second Jeep that Motec ever did, and it's still running strong. This Jeep uh, has a single module system in it. About 90,000 miles now. So Dan installed the new battery tray. You can see it really cleaned it up. And we mounted the GM computer here, as again, there is no Chrysler computer on this build. I gotta say that this L9H was put in all the way back in about 2009, and it's been a great motor. I've had zero issues with it. Uh, 90,000 miles later, it's still getting good economy. It doesn't burn any oil. It's, uh, it, it's really is a great motor, and it tells you that the LS is still viable in the JK. Uh, 
I, I could barely stand to drive this vehicle. Um, when I first got it, uh, trying to drive it on the highway um, was, was horrible. But the LS changed all that. I just went to 37 inch tires and some bead locks, uh, fixing this thing up to take it out on the road again. Actually, we're gonna be taking it up to Utah, getting a lot of snow up there, and my wife's gonna be driving it with my kids. This vehicle has a single module system with full traction control, which I know most of you guys don't want, but it's there for you. Cruise control, tap shift, it has everything. Let's see what we got over here. What's Dustin working on? It's an LT1, wow. <laughs> An LT1 in this Jeep is going to be fun. Those tires won't have a chance, even in four-wheel drive. But, yep, here we got an LT1. Um, looks like it uh, has already got our battery tray in it. It's got our dual header radiator. And again, guys, we're running the factory harness on these. So this is right from GM. And we're even plug and playing the, uh, the power distribution center on these. Um, we have an interior connector. There's two connectors, uh, one's interior and one's chassis, um, and it's the factory GM chassis connector that goes back to one of the O2 sensors, the vent solenoid, um, fuel tank pressure sensor, and some other stuff back there, and it's exactly how GM does it, and it's exactly how we do it. This, this is gonna be an interesting build. And a JK this light with these tires and an LT1 is, uh, it's gonna be fun. We'll go back and take a quick look at the uh, machine shop, but it's pretty loud back there, so always a lot going on back here. And guys, we're going to be doing some new enclosures for our electronics. We're going to be machining them out of uh, billet aluminum or structural plastic. I'm not sure yet, but that'll be coming down the road soon. This is what's left of an order of 50 radiators that we got in about a week and a half ago. And if you guys think we got a few Jeeps in the shop, we got just about as many outside of the shop. So let's see what we're gonna be driving soon. And some of you customers might be watching. We should be driving this one in the next couple of weeks. Actually, it's probably gonna be done later this week, but I gotta get around to driving it. Um, as you know, that's an LT1. This is a... Uh, I do believe a uh, six liter LS. You can tell the six liter because they got iron blocks and uh, this one has an iron block. So yeah, we're gonna be driving this six liter here soon. And let me say something about this LED7. I don't know of anybody that's done an LED7 so far. This one's running the T93 transmission controller and we are running the electronic brakes. We're not gonna try to t drill and tap a, a vacuum port into it. We were considering going to electronic steering in this, but it was easy enough to put that type 2 pump on um, and you'll notice he does have an xd box and the xd box is rather large but it fit with this uh with this type 2 pump so we're going to run that and i'm really curious to see how this led 7 does with dynamic fuel management interesting they have a little 6.2 l plus on this um on this led 7 block i'm guessing that 6.2 liter plus uh, the actual block is different on the LED7 versus the LED6 because the lifters are inside the block now. They used to be in the lifter manifold assembly up here, but I think GM made a tighter package with this LED7. How much good it's going to do, I don't know. Also the stop start, I don't know. You can see our uh, hydraulic motor mounts, easy engine mounts that drop right in work on the LED7 just like I did in the LED6. So I'm really excited to see how this thing runs with, uh, with this LED7. And this has the new 10 speed in it, which is a little bit different. Let's walk around. So this is the 2020 transmission, which requires the new uh, transmission controller. And we found a few things different, including the shift lever. There is no more drain plug on the bottom to fill it through. You fill it through the a plug in the back just like a transfer case or a differential uh, we do have an atlas three speed in this uh, three speed two speed three to one gear ratio we are running the stock gm transfer case adapter along with uh, our 8l90 8l90 slash 10l80 adapter i did not 
know this, but he's got double throwdown on this. You just never know. You pull the body off and you don't know what you're going to find. This is going to be a heck of a, a ride when we're done with this L87. You might want to add this one onto the list of test drives in the next couple of weeks. So we got our work cut out for us and there's going to be a lot of test drives coming up. But there's going to be a lot of interesting test drives coming up. Like the 650 horse manual transmission two-door build. The L87. I, I didn't even show you the LT5 we have in the back. But we got an LT5 back there we're putting in. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up guys. Stay tuned.